Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Have you ever been nervous? Man, I don't know why. I spoke quite a few times, but I, for some reason or another, I'm more nervous today than I've ever been. I don't know why. <clears throat> Let's start off with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Thank you, dear God. Thank you. Thank you for using me, Lord. I'm nothing. I'm a nobody. But with you, with your blood, covering me, covered my sins, and I willingly gave myself to you, dear God. I can be anything that you would have me to be. For I gave myself to you, dear God. And it's today as I stand behind this pulpit, Lord. I can do nothing without you. Not a thing. I'm not a well-educated man. In my eyes, I am nothing. But God, my Father in heaven, I believe without a shadow of a doubt. With your power, I can be anything that you would have me to be. You put me here behind this pulpit today to give out your word. But I need you to do something for me. I need that anointing power that only can come from heaven. The power to preach. The power to read your precious word. To get these words out that you gave me, Lord. You preached this sermon to me over and over. And Lord, then you can just remove me. May they see you through these words. Not me, but you, dear God. And may you be glorified through it all. Nothing that I've said or done, because I can do nothing without you. And may you be praised through it all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I thank my pastor for allowing me to get up here and speak. But it wasn't just him. God laid it upon his heart. I don't take that lightly. My father in heaven, he's, he's a dear father to me as he should be to each and every one of you. The scriptures, I got two scriptures. We're going to turn to into Matthew 26. And we're going to read verses 27 and 28. If you would, please. Let's all stand and give reverence to these two scriptures from God's word. If you're able and willing, please stand. <clears throat> if all of you found your places, can you say amen? amen? And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. You may be seated. If I was going to title this message today, I would say, what is at our disposal? What is at our disposal? Jesus right here, he was gathering his disciples together for the last supper. As these man, men gathered around him, he held up a cup. He started to explain that the blood is the new covenant. The blood is the new covenant. The blood that he is fixing to shed. Disciples didn't quite understand what he was talking about right here. These two scriptures we read, how precious Jesus was, how precious he was. He knew 
the Father. He knew the Father. He had a service to do for the Father in heaven. He had that service to do. He was trying to get his disciples, his little inner group, his little inner group together and show them what he was about to do. But yet, through all of that, what was he doing? The writer penned down these words for you and I. For you and I. Whereas the blood of bulls and lambs and goats, they continuously tried to cover the sins of the world. He was trying to explain to them that this one blood was going to cover it all. In Matthew 5, 17, says this, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. I go to witness to people, and what do they say? I give them scriptures in the Old Testament. Oh, that was in the Old Testament. That's under the law. We're not under the law. What did he just say? Did he say he destroyed what the law? He didn't say nothing about it. He took the law away from them. He didn't say nothing about it. He destroyed the law. He said he fulfilled it. And what did the prophets say? They prophesied. Did he say he was destroying the prophets? The prophet was all about the law. No, he didn't destroy any of it. He said he came to fulfill it. So don't never say that we're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. We still got to live by this law. We ain't got to sacrifice these goats and lambs. Why? Jesus took that away. <clears throat> that he that he in one selfless loving act would do what no other sacrifice has been able to do in the world in the world in the world began a new covenant with who God almighty the creator and the blood covenant that if anyone would trust, trust in that blood, trust in that blood, they would have the power of this blood to receive. We have to trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. Why do we have to trust in the blood of Jesus Christ? He shed it for us. He shed it for our sins. So what if we receive it? What are we going to get? We just get salvation? Oh, no, no, we don't just get salvation. We get redeemed. We get redeemed. We get atonement. We get atonement. We get healed. We get protection. We get deliverance. We get strength. We get transformed. Transformed. There is one to work in power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. God takes away the sins of the world. Only to the saved man. His blood has the power to redeem. Has the power to redeem. Amen. Redeem, redeem, redeem. By the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Redeem, redeem. His children forevermore. Can I get an amen now? Amen. amen. Yes, he redeemed us all through the blood of Jesus Christ. He re Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs. On a tree. Hanging on a tree. Jesus took that. Jesus took that. The law was hard. It was almost a curse upon mankind. Almost. It, not, not quite, but it was almost. No one was 
pure enough. No one was good enough. Even the priests, they couldn't obey every law. God saw this. He knew that. So what happened? What happened? Oh, our Savior. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You know, the law itself, it, it, had, it had no compassion. And let's go back to, let's go to Romans 8.15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. See, in the law, the law had the man in bondage and showed every, every little thing that was wrong in his life. I mean everything. Things that we take for granted. See, that law, it showed it. It showed it. But the blood of Jesus, it freed us. It freed us from that curse. It freed us. Amen. Like I said, the law had no compassion. Compassion at all. Today, the lamb. Tomorrow, a dove. The next week, a goat. The next, a bull. It never stopped continuously trying to cover the sin. It never stopped. It never stopped. The priest had to enter into the Holy of Holies once a year to what? To sprinkle the blood on the altar of the mercy seat. For what? For the sin of the Israel people. We were Gentile. We didn't live there. Some of us had no hope whatsoever. But God had a plan. But God had a plan. Yeah. He had a plan. <laughs> Glory to God. First Peter 1 Peter 1.18 For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation, receiving by Traditions from your fathers. For as much as ye know, ye were not redeemed corruptible things. What's he talking about? See, our dad is here on earth. He spoils us. We spoil our children. We give them corruptible things like silver and gold. Try to give them cars. Give them what they want. Is it going to last forever? Oh, no, it's not going to last. But what did, what did God give us? He gave us something that will last forever. He tell us in the Word. He didn't give us nothing that was corruptible. He gave us to us for eternal, eternal life. He gave us, if we'll accept him, eternal life. But so many times, we're still letting down. We're still letting down. So many times, we let him down on our witnessing. I had a good day yesterday. I had a busy day. I started out, had three or four people to meet. And then I thought of two or three more. I ended up meeting about seven or eight people. But two of them, two of them, we got to talking about the gospel. We got to talking about the gospel. We got to sharing the gospel. One of them was a Pentecostal lady. Oh, man. We got it on. I prayed for her for a little. Prayed for one of her nephews. He's got bad sugar diabetes, and I prayed for him. She says, he says he's safe, but he loves sugar. 
He loves sugar. He loves it too much. And when you take him four met formula a day and four shots a day, yes, he's got a problem. He's got a problem. And he's kind of heavy. I tried to give him advice that would help him. Talk to another lady. Witness to her. Her and her parents. Her husband. She said he was on disability. Can't do any work. Not that old. I think she said he was 57. I don't think that's old myself. He's got bad sugar diabetes. I tried to help her. Medicine alone ain't going to do the job. But God. Thank God. <clears throat> the precious blood of Jesus. Did I read 1 Peter 1 19? But when the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, but one cry from Jesus and God was no longer separated from man by a veil, but as a cry. He cried out, it is finished. It is finished. Amen. The veil was torn from top to bottom. And now man could be redeemed. He could be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood. That blood covenant of Jesus Christ. And now man is no longer separated from the presence of God. From the presence of God. By the blood. By the blood of one. One sacrifice. Praise God. Praise God. Hebrews 10, 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. Said the Lord, I will put, woo, here comes the law. I will put my law into their heart and in their mind will I write them. What is he talking about? Is he just talking about the Israel people? The word of God is for all of us. It's for all of us. Or did he say we put it in all of our hearts? Did he say we put it in all of our hearts? We can't deny the word of God. We cannot deny the word of God. We cannot. Hebrews 10, 17. And their sins, oh, I love you. And their sins and iniquities. Iniquity. Ah, <laughs> will I remember no more? Amen. Will I remember no more? Woo! Hallelujah! Glory to God! He don't remember them no more. No, he don't. Ten eighteen. Now where remission of their of these is, now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for. Sin. No more offering for sin. Why? Because of Jesus. Hebrews 10, 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. You see, that priest had to go down and sprinkle that blood. On that mercy seat. Now, by the blood of Jesus, we can step right into the holiness. Right into the holiness of Jesus Christ. Jesus done that for us. Yeah. So we just couldn't do that. I talked to some people yesterday, and they got, got talking about the Catholics. I said, well, don't they still believe and they have to go to the priest? And talk to the priest, and the priest has to go talk to God. Well, yeah, all of them don't believe that way. I said, but some of the ones that I know that's a true, true Catholic, that's what they believe in. They don't think they can go and talk to God. But by the word of God, now I'm not telling, saying you the Catholic is wrong. 
But by what I read in God's word, we can step right into holiness of God. We can go straight to God through the blood of Jesus Christ because Jesus done it for us. Jesus done it for us. Jesus done it for us. There is one to work in power in the blood of the Lamb. His blood has the power to transform. His blood has the power to transform. It is the blood of Jesus that when it's applied to our lives, it makes the chiefest violence of sinners transform them. It transforms them body, soul, and mind into the image of God. You know, I was going to use one of the gentlemen this morning that comes to church here, but he's not here. He was transformed. Y'all heard the preacher tell that story about that man was in prison. He was on death row and he, he was never supposed to have been released from prison. Well, we had a guy to visit our church. I called his name, Brother James, James Carson. He came here. He was on his last leg. Brother James had spent time in prison, and he knew who the, our pastor was talking about. But yet, he couldn't believe that a God in heaven could save someone like him. The preacher was telling him about this man in prison on death row, and now is out. He was never to be released from prison, but now he's out. Well, James couldn't believe that because he spent time with him in prison. He knew him. He knew how bad of a guy he was. I mean, he was the chiefest of the sinners. As far as he was concerned, as far as he was concerned. And now he was born again, he was saved, and he was walking the streets of this earth and preaching God's word, giving his testimony for God. James, a grown man, he bawled and cried. He gave his life to Christ. Why? He can save that sorry rascal. I know he can save me because I ain't done near as bad as he is. It don't matter. It don't matter what you've done. God can save you through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Hebrews. Hebrews. 914. Having much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the <clears throat> through the entire spirit, wait a minute, internal spirit offered, offered himself without spot to God. What did he do? He purged your conscience from death works to what to serve the living God what about Saul he's in the Bible now he was a murderer he tried to destroy the church of the living God <laughs> but <laughs> he had an encounter he had an encounter on the master's road oh what, what happened on that encounter? Did God just change him? Jesus cried out. Jesus cried out. He said, why? Why persecutest thou me? Why persecutest thou me? Why would Jesus say that to him? Why would Jesus do that to someone they were trying to destroy the church. Because Paul was going by the law. 
He didn't know about that blood sacrifice. He didn't know about Jesus. Well, he may have knew it, but he didn't believe it. But when he had that encounter of Jesus Christ, what did he do? He humbly bowed down. He humbly bowed down. And what did he say? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> but what happened? He was transformed. Not only just transformed, he even changed his name. <laughs> he changed his name. One from Saul to Paul. One from Saul to Paul. Praise God. Glory to God. <laughs> the thief on the cross. <laughs> he had an encounter. <laughs> yes, he did. He had an encounter. <laughs> he was condemned man. He was condemned and he was doomed for hell. But he had an encounter. He had an encounter with Jesus Christ. With Jesus Christ. He was transformed. And that condemned man. He was transformed into a saint. That's what Jesus said. Dwell in paradise. Today. In paradise. We don't realize what we get. When we ask Jesus to come into our heart. But that's not, the, that's just the beginning of it. We have to ask him to come into our heart. We have to admit and we have to see ourselves as a son. He stands at the door and knocking. He stands at the door and knocking. And you may have been to the altar, and I believe this. I don't have scripture for it. You've been to the altar and you've asked him to come into your heart many, many times. But you still wasn't transformed. Why? Well, you didn't give yourself to him. You didn't open the door. He's not going to kick it down. You ask him to come in, you can stand behind the door all you want to and ask him to come in. He's not going to kick it down. You've got to open that door up. And when you open the door up, you give yourself to him. Once you give yourself to him, you're not yours no more. Oh, no. Once you give yourself to Jesus, you're transformed. You bought what a price, the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. When you got up from that altar, did all things become new? If it didn't, you came here and you said a prayer. That's all you done. You said a prayer. But you didn't open your door. So Jesus couldn't come in. You didn't give yourself to him. You've got to give yourself to him. So many people, the devil deceives them. They're thinking they're safe because they came to the altar. They said a little prayer. They got up and went outside. Nothing changed. They're still the same human being as they ever was. Nothing changed in their life. And they don't understand it. Oh, I don't have a shout like them. Why don't I have a shout? I, oh, he's always saying amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's always praising God. Looks like everything is still falling in on me. I, I don't understand it. You, I'm not telling you you're not saved. I'm telling you you've not gave yourself to God. You've not gave yourself to God. He was knocking on your heart's door. He was knocking. But he wouldn't kick it in. Oh, no, he wouldn't kick it in. You wouldn't owe me. He's waiting for you to owe me so he can come in. He wants to come in. <clears throat> there is no soul gone too far that Jesus can't save. Jesus cannot transform a sinful nature into the desire of the holiness of God. Without you. Mm -mm. You've got to give yourself to him. You've got to give yourself to him. <coughs> Isaiah 1.18 Come now 
and let us reason together, saith the Lord, that your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. His blood has the power to give life. To give life. See, we don't realize when we're lost and undone, we're out into the world serving the devil. We're dead. We're walking dead people and don't even realize it. But when you give yourself to Christ and ask him to come into your heart and save you, you have eternal life. You're no longer dead. You're no longer dead. Blood is our source of life. Without, without it cruising through our veins, there is no life. There is no life. We have to have blood going through our veins. Take all the blood out of a body, there's no life. There is no life. Without the blood of Christ applied to our spirit and soul, we are bound for the certainty of what? Of the second death. Of the second death. Of the second death. Second death. That, that bothers me. That bothers me because I know people. I know people. I've got people that's related to me, close, that's bound for that second death. Revelation 21 8. But. The fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers, hormones, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, which is the second death. I need some help here now. Where's Dalton? Come up here, Dalton. Ah, uh, let's see. I need a grown-up. Brian, would you help? I need four more just for a moment that can uh, tie a rope. Come here, Mike Jr., Blake. Ah, uh, come on. Come on, Chris. Tie his hands behind his back and his feet. Tie his hands behind his back and his feet. What do you got? Come on, one of you can tie his feet over here. Come on, if you can tie his feet. Praise God. All right, y'all can leave. They might want to get them loose now. This is just an example. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Let's go, let's see, Matthew 13 and 41 and 43. <laughs> <clears throat> the Son of Man. Hmm. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which doeth iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. Uh -oh. mm. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their fathers, whom has ear to hear, let him hear. Let's go to Matthew 13. Let's see. No, which one did I read? I read Matthew 41, 43. Let's go to Matthew 22, 12. 12 and 14. Let me get it to it myself. <coughs> And he said unto him, Friend, how cometh thou in Hilda, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into out of darkness. Thou shalt be wailing and gnashing of teeth for many are called but few are chosen now what if now I'm not saying these two gentlemen right here is not born again I'm using only for an example but what if you are standing here in the presence of Jesus Christ your family member, or your closest friend, or even your member in Christ, that you know or you have a doubt that they're saved. The king, Jesus, says, bind him hand and foot. Bind him hand and foot and cast him into outer darkness. Do anyone in here today have anyone close to him? Anyone that you know to get, could be bound hand and foot and cast in outer darkness? God's speaking to you. The voice is coming out of my mouth. But it's God speaking to you. Or oh, it could be yourself. Could be you standing up there. It could you be you standing in the presence of God. And he says, bound him hand and foot, cast him into outer darkness. Have we done everything in our power? Have we prayed enough? Have we prayed long enough? Sometimes it takes years. Most importantly, what do they see in our life? Do we show forth Christ in our life? Do we live the life, do we live the example that Christ would have us to do? See, that's when it comes back on us. That's when it hurts us as believers, the ones that's born again. But yet, it was just like us. We tied it. We tied it around. Why? We didn't live the life that we were supposed to. We said we were a Christian, but they looked at our life. How was we living? Was we living for God? Jesus Christ said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He didn't say keep one or two or three. All my commandments. All my commandments. When we're talking about living under the law, oh, we're still law. That's our schoolmaster. That's our schoolmaster. We ought to live by them. Most people look at the Ten Commandments. 
when the Tenth Commandments was written, that was under the law. That was under the law. So if you want to look at those, you got to live by all of it. All of it. Y'all going to be here for a while. <laughs> Just stand there. Just think about it when you're tired. See, if we hadn't tied your feet, you'd probably walk off. Well, he's through with me now. Be trying to get them ropes undone. When the Holy Spirit ties you, there's no getting away. There's no getting away. There's no getting away. Life is more abundantly can only be found in the power of his blood. John 10, 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they that they may have it more abundantly. The ones that have life. That's the ones that say, one that's born again. One's is born again. The blood has the power to heal and protect. Protect you from what? <laughs> It'll protect you from being cast into out of darkness. Or to be wailing and gnashing the teeth. That's one. But what about while you're here on earth? It'll protect you here too. We'll get to that. <laughs> <coughs> you know... When a virus tries to act up in our bodies, uh, our, our blood cells, it attacks back. It tries to protect this body. God made us that way. When you injure yourself, I injured myself this morning, and I didn't even feel it, really. I, I knew my hand bumped against something, but then the blood just poured. And I got places all over my hand. But the blood that goes through us, our natural blood, it tries to protect us. It forms a scale. Why? So it don't get infected. So it don't get diseased. See, our, our blood itself, it's, it's doing everything it can in the power to protect us. But that spiritual blood, spiritual blood of Jesus Christ, <laughs> it protects us. What about when the, when the enemy <laughs> rises up against us? The blood of the Lord, our Savior, covers us like a shield. Like a shield. It's working. It's working to destroy that enemy. When your body suffers all those energies, everything in you is trying to heal you. But see, the enemy of the world, Satan, see, he tries to do everything he can to rise up something against us. Why does he do that? He don't like nothing we do. It's a man in this church. He used to go to church. He went to church, and I went with him. I didn't know this about him. I know he wasn't happy. I could see that in his expression and in his face. He walked by him. Mm-hmm. He stuck at you, hey, hey, bro. All right, how you doing? That's about the way he done. His wife was faithful in the church. She'd done everything she possibly could. I can't say he hated all churches, but he did not like that church. He hated what the church was and what it stood for. He was lost. He was lost. Lost man don't like church. Sometimes they'll go for Christmas and holidays 
and feel like they need your knee to go. This brother stands in here, well, he's sitting in here today, but he can rejoice. When I see him come in there, he smiles. He smiles. He's rejoicing. He loves everything the church stands for. Am I right, brother? Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 He was lost and undone. But yet, he got transformed. He's not the old man no more. No, he's not. He's a new man. Now, he still loves some of the worldly things. But praise God, they're not sinful things. As long as they don't take him from God, and as long as he don't use those things when he's supposed to be serving God, they don't become his idols. When they become his idols, that's when they'll become sin. There's nothing wrong with what he does. Or none of us. I'm just using him as an example. We can still do pleasure things in the world. Like, you don't want to go to a dance. I don't why would you want to go to a dance? I want to say his dad's drunks. But if you want to go fishing with someone, what's wrong with that? Oh, that ain't nothing. You may, you may want to take one of your brothers in church here. You may not. Because he might be a better fisherman than you. And you don't want to be showed up. <laughs> I used to, here it was three or four men here used to fish all the time. And I used to hear that fish stories. One would start here, his arms out here like this, doesn't stand behind him like this. They'd be telling them fish stories. But I guess that's a story and not a lie. In his mind, it was a big fish. In his mind, it was a big fish. Nothing wrong with that. That's a worldly thing. There's nothing wrong with it. But when you put that thing before God, it becomes your eye. That's when it becomes sin. <clears throat> God is good to us. Many times in life, we suffer difficulty in different things. The word that was said that cuts like a knife into the heart. I'm not going to read that, but it's Hebrews 4. And 12, you can go, go through that. But the knife, I'm talking about the word of God, is sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts into the heart. Why does it cut? If I said something to offend you, don't blame me, blame, blame God. All I'm saying is God's word. Most of what I've done is just read scripture. A sacrifice act of the, that almost destroyed you. Have you ever had one of those in your life since you became a Christian that almost destroyed you? That almost destroyed you? Sometimes it's we live in this life and things happen and it, it, it don't necessarily have to happen to us. It can happen close to us. But it affects us. It affects us. And if we don't watch, it'll destroy us. We've got a family in here today that's going through that right now. I'm not going to call their name. But something that's happened to someone close to them. I know they're in church today. But what happened to them, there's nothing they can do. That's gone. That's past tense. But they, what they do today can make a difference in the rest of their lives, and the rest of their family's lives. So many times we'll stop. We get mad. I've seen women 
They lose their husband or something like that. They get mad with God. It's all right. Get mad. But come back to God. Come back to God. It's not God's fault. I've seen people take their life. The spouse get mad with God. God didn't take their life. They took their own. Sometimes someone else will take your life. They'll get mad with God because that person, he was a murderer. He was a murderer. Well, God could have, yes, God could have directed the bullet. But God knew what that person was going to do. If he'd have saved them. If he was going to serve the Lord or not. See, we don't see God's plan. We are not intelligent enough, enough to understand God's plan. People that live and look like they live for an old age, God has got a plan for them. And I believe that all of us have our days, and our days are numbered. We don't realize that. When we were born, some of us, we may not have, our number may have been to 18 years, may have been 50 years, may have been 70, may have been 90, may have been 100. If I'm in good health, yes, I'd love to live to be 120. If someone has got to help me, I pray to God, don't let me suffer and live that long. So you said, well, he, God, they live to be 120. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? If I'm not able to tell people about God and what God has done for me and still able to take care of myself, no, I wrote for the, my father to take me home. See, we forget this life has suffering and pain. The other side, it don't have suffering and pain. It's a better life. It's eternal life. We're on this side for a short while. And I think we're tested on this side. We are tested on this side. I really do believe that. I'm going to have to cut through some of this. <clears throat> His blood has the power to deliver. It is the power of his blood of Jesus that breaks the yoke of bondage of sin from our lives. He does not just forgive us and leave us for the gaps of Satan, but by the power of the blood of Christ, we experience freedom. Freedom. From what? From sin. He's, he remembers his sins no more. So we're free from them. Although we may sin, we may do a little something wrong. We can step right in the presence of God again and ask for forgiveness. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Galatians. One five. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What is he talking about right here? The yoke of bondage. That was under the law. We was under the yoke of bondage. It's also talking about the yoke of sin. We're not to be in bondage with that sin. If we're born again, we strive. To have the desire to please him. The one that saved us. So we're not under that bondage. We're not under that bondage. We're not under the bondage of law no more. Because if we work daily to please God, it ain't no trouble. It ain't no trouble. The only thing we have to put up with is this flesh. This flesh is the hardest thing. Now the devil, he'll put, try to put an obstacle in front of you. I just said that. But when he puts that obstacle in front of us, Jesus, Jesus Christ, he'll come. He'll wrap his loving arm around us with that blood shed of his. If it's running through our veins, 
we can feel that comfort. When you heard that word that almost destroyed you, oh, it hurt. It was a mild little word. It was a soft little word. Because ain't nobody going to come up to you and shout it. When they got to tell you that a loved one is, is passed, or a loved one was in a wreck and they're in the hospital, oh, they don't want to shout it. Because they don't want you to see, see you fall all to pieces. Jesus, right then, he wraps his arm around you. The blood of Jesus Christ, he starts to comfort you. Comfort you. Only if you'll trust in him. Only if you'll trust in him. If you get mad with him and turn away, what will he do? She get mad with you and turn away. Do you run after her? Please, honey, please, honey. Or do you just turn your back so she'll cool off in a little bit? Best not never get mad. Best not to never get mad at Jesus. Because Jesus don't do nothing wrong. He knows what's right. He always knows what's right. But yet we do wrong. We do wrong. Why do we do wrong? We were born that way. That's why we do wrong. We were born that way. <clears throat> the blood of Christ can break and set us free. But not just set us free. He can deliver us. We can overcome. We can overcome. He overcomes. Colossians 1.13, who has delivered us from the power of darkness, of darkness now, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And his dear son in whom we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the <coughs> word of thy testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. What is he saying right there? If you love your life in this world, as the world live it today, you may not have the love of Christ in you. But if you hate the way this world lives and the way you have to live it to get by, because you can't live it for God the way you want to and the way you think you should, that means you hate this life, but you love the life that Christ put in you. You love that life. You love serving him. You love serving him. And so it's just like a job. We may hate our job. We may love our job. But if we thought of it as it's serving Christ, working for that man or working on that job, we would love it more. I want to say we'd hate about it. It's the lost one there. And we wouldn't hate them. We would love them because we'd be praying for them. But we would hate what they do. That's the only thing we'd hate about it. We just hate what they do. I've heard people say, I hate to go into work. I got to put up with this and I got to put up with that. They're going in it with the wrong attitude. Most people come in church with the wrong attitude. They're not looking for something. They're not looking to receive anything. They're not looking to give anything. What you come for? What you come for? I come looking. I come to give. I come to receive. What? I need God. I need the altar. I need to praise God. I need to worship God. I need to hear the word of God. God is good to me. God is good to me. 
His blood is sufficient. It's the only blood that we need. I got other scriptures here I was going to read, but time is running out. I said I wouldn't be here long, and I won't plan it on it. Blake, if you would, come on and get on the piano. I'm going to give you the altar call. I want you to think in your mind. Look at these two boys up here. Do you have anyone in your family, in your life, of surrounding you that you know that may be bound hand and foot and cast in the outer darkness?